Okay, continue our study of evil, what the Bible says about it. And we're not going to do every instance of evil like we did the full study. But we're going to hit the, the main features. And right now we are on topic number six, the heart and evil or an evil heart. If you want a copy of this report, evil. You can go to our Family Hayward Family website and go to the download page and you can download or upload whatever it's called the Word document for all these reports that we have. So go ahead and get a copy of it. When we're looking at today, number six, we just began last week, the evil heart, Jeremiah 7.24. And we're just looking at what the Bible says is evil. Not what I say is evil. Not what they say is evil. Because remember, a while back, weeks back, we did a study, evil's good and good's evil. And then we did a study, evil versus good. Our standard, as you go to Jeremiah 7, 24, our standard is what the Bible says. All the time, as a street preacher, many a time we get people come up to me who well, I'm good. What's your standard of good? You know, there are criminals. And there are people involved with uh, pornography. And they think pornography is a, is a form of art. And they truly, honestly believe that. For me, I don't. So their good is not my good. Some people like spinach. That's good for them. Not for me. I like uh, peanut butter ice cream. Somebody may not like it. So where do we get good? Where do we get evil? Out of the King James 1611 Bible. Jeremiah 7, 24, the Bible says, But they hearkened not, nor inclined their ear, but walked in the counsels and the imagination of their evil heart. And notice it says, imaginations of the evil heart, not the imaginations of the head. Psychologists are dealing with the wrong body function or the wrong body organ. you got to deal with the heart. And we'll see that through this study. And it's not a pill or laying down and telling you your life's problem. It's coming to Calvary and repenting of your sins and putting your faith and belief in nothing but the blood of Jesus. That Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, if I go get a heart transplant... That's not going to stop my thoughts. I mean, you got a physical heart and then you got that that, that that unphysical heart in our life. And when we're looking through the study of evil heart, we're not talking about that thing that goes boom, 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 boom. We're talking about our inner self. So we have imagination of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. Backsliding. That's where we get the backsliding. So there are counselors and consuls that they think the motive of their imagination is, they have no idea it comes from the heart. And they may be deceived. And if they are deceived, well, how are they going to help you? How is someone going to help you in the realm of a creator that created man and that man rejected God's commandment and here we are today how are you going to help somebody when you don't believe in the God that created us you don't believe in the creation of God you don't believe all sorts of our troubles are our heart well how are you going to deal with the problem 
when the problem lies in the sinful nature of man and the answer is God through Jesus Christ. And what we see here in 724, that there is an imagination of the heart and not just of the heart, of an evil heart, as we'll continue in this study throughout the heart, which is going to take a few more weeks. And as we study the heart today and the next few weeks, Lord willing, we're going to see that, why did that cuss come out of our mouth? Where did that come from? It comes from your heart, your evil heart. Why are all people today revolting in the United States of America? And let's get more psychiatrists, let's get more counseling. It's not going to work because you're going to deal with the head and you're not going to deal with the issue, the heart, and you're not going to give them the source of relief that they need, the Bible and the salvation of Jesus Christ. America is far away from the Bible. In Jeremiah 11, chapter 8. Jeremiah 11, 8. In Jeremiah 11, 8, yet they obeyed not. You know people who don't obey God? Are we Christians completely obedient to God? Why? Why are we not obedient to God? Nor incline their ear, listening to God. But walk every one in the imagination, there it is again, of the evil heart. Everybody don't, everybody does not obey God, they don't listen to God, and they walk according to their heart. Uh, let, let your heart guide you. Be guided by your heart. That's the most stupidest advice ever, and if it's advice by a Christian, you need to smack him in the face. Because that advice to follow your heart is nowhere in the scriptures. When we are doing a study number seven right now, Number seven of, how many hearts we got? That did not sound right. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen times we're going to look at, we're at number seven of the evil heart. There's a path after imagination of evil heart. They think in their evil, in, they think, they think in their heart of evil and walk after it. God will judge against him. Why did the criminal do what he did and whatever he did? Because his heart is evil. He disobeyed the word of God and he did not listen to the word of God. And he went walking after his imagination of the evil heart. And God will judge him as such. The threat, again, is when a man in medicine tries to help a fellow man with troubles and crises. As one turns to a psychiatrist, fix the mind of the head. And the Bible clearly states the trouble of man is not the thoughts of the mind. It's the thought of an evil heart. Now, I'm not ruling out psychiatry because there may be... There may be some medications that are needed for some ailments. But can I say 95% of the psychiatrists out there are not going down to the very foundation of God, Jesus, and the Bible, and the heart. Now there may be some Christian psychiatrists out there and doing what we're talking about. But not many. I mean, what if, what if I'm having troubles with my heart? I'm not, but I'm saying, what if I had troubles with my heart? Okay. Well, 
going to a dermatologist is not going to help me. Taking care of my skin is not going to help my heart. You're not going to get a full course meal at a coffee shop. You can't get something on the empty shelf at the grocery store. Though it's supposed to be there, if it's not there, you're not getting it. Because one gets saved does not mean the evil, wicked heart gets renewed. No. The old sins and the capacity to retain and seek new sins are still there and we're always will always be there to death. And we now have a new battle. And our battle is against ourselves. And when it comes to sins, we've got to learn, no, I'm not going to do that. Now, many, many years ago, in 1991, I was able to give up alcohol totally. Praise the Lord. I don't have a taste for alcohol no more. Years later, I was able to give up smoking. Amen. Glory to God. But I still retain sins in my life that go all the way back from before when I was saved. And I'm not going to tell you what they are. Because they're still in my evil, wicked heart and my imagination. I have not got victory and God has not allowed me to get victory. Where did they come from? If I were to go talk to a psychiatrist, he would, he would sit me down again and talk about my head. It's my heart. And not my head. And it's not going to help me talk about because it may even make it worse. I need to learn. Uh, the other, last night I, I had I, that, that, that umption to sin. And I said, no, stop. And the thoughts of my heart, no, that's it. Got to stop. Lord Jesus, forgive me for the thoughts I've had. But then there's sometimes I continue to entertain and I sin and that comes from my evil heart. Because I've fed that evil heart through all these years. And my heart has, has gained an appetite for a particular sin. Whereas I don't have the appetite for alcohol. And, you know, I won't say smoking. I do. You know, when I come into the people smoking and I take that extra look the sin but alcohol God is able to get me the victory through the alcohol and God is giving me where the stuff smells like urine I don't want it but I am not completely righteous and I'm not completely sinless why because my inside of my heart and when I am dead if the Lord tarries well, my, my, my thoughts and my heart will be dead. Let's see where I was. All right, I skipped. Okay, well, I'll come back to that moment. Here. The old sins and the capability to retain and still new sins are there, always will be there till death. Saved man sin and lost man sin. You may be, as a Christian, you may pick up new sins. What would be a new sin that you would not have done as an old man that would count? You don't go to church no more. You don't read your Bible no more. You don't pray no more. You don't tell people about Jesus no more. Them are sins. That don't count for an unsaved man. Clearly, to, to, to preach the gospel to every creature... Clearly, that's a Bible statement for those that are saved. And if your heart don't want to do that, and you got imagination think for things more important than witnessing, well, you obtain a new sin. Again, Bible preaching, God honored, Bible 
reading, sin, preaching, prayer, and the battle and desire to be like and more like God and true repentance of your evil sins is one way that the medicine and doctors cannot cure. You cannot take a red pill and be eliminated from the shame and guilt of your sins. You need the, the, the scarlet blood of Jesus Christ, who is the blood of God. That's what's going to wash away the guilt and shame of your sins. And then when Satan comes up and brings up that sin, say, Satan, I don't know what you're talking about. God says, I don't know what you're talking about. Because if my sins are under the blood of Jesus Christ, they are forgiven and they are cleansed and God doesn't remember them no more. Go ahead, go get drunk and get wasted. And when you're done drunk and you're done being wasted, and sins are still there and you added more sin. And the more you take the medication from the psychiatrist or any doctor to eliminate the guilt and shame and, and your sin condition, you only add more to your sin because you have not put the faith and trust and confessed before God. The evil thoughts in a wicked heart can only be diagnosed with a King James Bible and be washed and cleansed through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must sit under true Bible sin against preaching. That's not your modern church today. You need Bible reading and Bible studying. You need prayers to God. You need to serve God. You need to be seeking God. You need to be fighting against your sins with God's help. One must be a born again of the new nature of the new man. And yet that old nature and that old man still remain. And God is not the psychiatrist or the doctor. When it comes to the imaginations of the evil heart. Now Jesus said that those that are whole have no need of physician but they are sick. Okay, you're sick, you, you know, go to the doctor. But we're not talking about that kind of sickness. We're talking about your evil heart that you still retain as a Christian. <clears throat> the cure for the present evil violence in the world and religion is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The death, burial, and resurrection according to the scriptures of the true holy God Jesus Christ. I wrote this before all this nonsense of coronavirus and that. This was done in 2019. That one is truly sorry and repents and after salvation fights the temptation to continue in any and all sin. You hate sin and you avoid it. Sin is not going to magically disappear. Because first you've got to confess, in order for, and God may, and listen, you confess that sin, and God forgives you sin, and he cleanses you that sin. God may, all right, that's it, you're done with that sin, glory to God. But then again, he may not. You need to sit under King James Bible sin, preaching, and a Christ-centered, honored God, loving, seeking pastor, and like the brethren who desire to be more like Christ and to be Christ-like, to be holy in holiness and true opposition to that which is evil. And this is why we're studying evil, because many churches are not like this. And there are some churches out there that, that some sins are allowed about and are okay. In the Corinthian church, there was a man that was having sex with his father's mother. And the Corinthian church was allowing it. That's a sin. And there are churches who got rid of repentance. And there are churches that call don't call it sin no more. And the world calls it shacking up, living together, having a romance, having an affair. No, it's called sin.
one must know to understand and to wisely apply what he knows and evil is never of God nor is it approved by God and when it's a sin but when evil becomes a judgment it will be used by God to chasten the people of their sins and rebelling against the word of God now again I've used the illustration a marijuana plant is not evil You take the leaves of that marijuana plant and you dry them and you put them in cigarette paper and you roll them up and you smoke them. Now it becomes a sin. And when the doctor tells you you smoke so much marijuana that your brain is fried, that's the evil of God, the judgment for sinning. Why we're studying the whole thing of evil? Evil can be a sin, yes. Evil can be a judgment without sin. There are people who have gotten the judgment of God and they haven't done the particular evil. There are babies being born today who are addicted to drugs because of their mothers. And those babies are getting an evil, not because they were born, but because of somebody else. And yet when you go to a doctor and you got lung cancer, a judgment of God that is evil, well, did you smoke cigarettes? Well, yeah. And, and, well, that's the evil. And there are people who get secondhand smoke and they don't smoke. Well, they didn't sin, but they got the judgment. The simplest way to avoid evil is not to walk in evil. And notice the, the verse says they walked. They obeyed not God. They inclined, they inclined not there. They would not listen. But everyone walked in the imagination of their evil heart. When, when your evil heart says, I want to do that sin. No. We're not going there. It's plain and simple. We're not going to do that. Body. Heart. We're not going to look at that. You've got to fight. And the only thing that's going to tell you what is sin is the King James Bible and hopefully a King James Bible believing Christ honored centered pastor. Your pastor doesn't preach about sin. He doesn't preach out of the King James Bible. You need to get a new pastor. A new church. Jeremiah 16, 12. And you tell him I said that. You can't bring this worldly garbage either. Jeremiah 16, 12. And ye have done worse than your father. For behold, ye walk. There's that walking again. Everyone after the imagination of his evil heart. And they may not hearken unto me. Oh, all right, see the realm? You see the, the constant flow? They're not obeying. They're not listening to God. And they're not obeying God. And at the end of Jeremiah, Judah's going to go into captivity. And Judah and Jerusalem are going to be destroyed. At the end of your beings, if you continue in your sin, your life will be destroyed. Your living will be destructed. And in this section of evil heart, the common thread is the imagination. And again, the imagination doesn't come from your head. It comes from your heart. Walking in a path that they will be walking. Being saved while not listening to God and not listening to his word. Thus, you're not walking in the path of God. Well, I'm walking in the footprints of Jesus. Not when you're sinning. Not when you're following the imagination of your evil heart, you're not walking in the imagination of Jesus. I mean the footsteps of Jesus. Jesus never had an evil heart and he never walked after an imagination of evil heart. And don't tell me it cannot happen. I can name countless names of family, friends, pastors, Christians who proclaim to be saved 
And when it comes to the word of God, they do the quite opposite. And they are not listening to God. Yes, I said pastors. Yes, I said Christians. And there are many out there, a dime a dozen plus shipping and handling. Just because you are a born-again, Bible-believing Christian does not mean you're living right. You can be saved and go into heaven and be just as wicked as the devil. By not listening to God, not giving heed to God, not obeying the Bible, and then walking after the imagination of your evil heart and still be saved. That's a shame. They devise Christian activities that are not Bible-centered, but to please rather than rebuke. I've been in many churches. I'm going to say it. BBS is one of them. And don't tell me I've been involved with four VBSs. Oh, not my B. Okay, maybe not your VBS. Okay. You got the one only VBS that... Listen. All right, I'll give you 15-minute Bible. You get 15-minute Bible. And you got 20 minutes arts and crafts. You got 20 minutes art, uh, 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 singing and playing. You got 20 minutes of red team and blue team. You got 20 minutes of eating. You got 20 minutes of going out in the playground and sliding and, and playing on the swing set. You got a 20 minute lecture. And you got 20 minutes of, okay, we got to make take an attendance. And out of all those 20 minutes, and I gave 20 minutes to, just to make you happy. Out of all that time, only the Bible got 20 minutes. And you had arts in class, and you had attendance, and you had eating, and you had playing, and you had. Friend, that's not Bible. The book of Acts says they went out and preached the gospel. They went out and preached the word. And a lot of these VBSs, a few I've been in, it's been watered down for the little kiddies to understand. That ain't it. You violated the scriptures and that came out of my lips and you got it on video. Okay? That's my conviction. Don't mess with my convictions. Because they like it does not always prove it's approved by God. There's a lot of things that Christians like. I said Christians. They're saved. They're going to heaven. I like it. And God's going to say, okay, wood, hair, stubble. I didn't like it. And I've heard many Christians say, I like it. See, the attitude of the period of our church is lied to see it and what God has to say, yet the present lied to see in church itself, many churches in the world who profess to be Christians, Ignore the word of God. They won't listen to the word of God. And they walk after the evil of the imagination of their heart. So they can get a lot of people. And look at all the people we had in church. That's a sin. You may not think it's a sin. I do. The scriptures do. You're wrong. God is right. And we'll find out the judgment seat of Christ. Don't try, to, don't try to rebuke me. Don't try to change me. I believe that. I wouldn't be preaching. I wouldn't be teaching it if I didn't believe it. And I know I've been kicked out of one church because of my beliefs on VBS. A well-known church. A well-known famous pastor. Okay? You just get in line. Pick a number. And we'll get to your number. Then you can gripe and complain. It ain't going to bother me. Revelation 3, 14 to 22. And the angel of the church is allowed to see it right. These things say the amen, Jesus. The faithful and true witness, Jesus. The beginning of the creation of God, Jesus. I know thy works. Thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou would, would be cold. God says, you know what? Just be cold. Be a dead Christian. Go ahead. 
Be a Christian on fire. Go ahead. But don't be lukewarm. Don't be a Christian this moment and then be a worldly in this moment. Don't work, walk in the world this thing and show up Sunday morning holier than thou. God says no. So then because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You're going to make God sick. You make God sick. God's going to vomit you. Your worldly attractions in, in the church that you profess to be Christian makes God sick. Makes me sick too. That's why I got kicked out of one church. It made me sick. Because thou sayest, I'm rich, increase with goods, and have need of nothing. Knows that thou art wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried with fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. And the shame of thy nakedness do not... You're naked. Your worldly appeal to the world in the Christian church, you're naked, you make God sick, you're poor, you're miserable, and you're wretched is what God feels about your programs. And you tell them, not only did Sally say that, but the Bible said that. That I'll see, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. Jesus is standing outside the line of the scene, church age, knocking. You know, as the days of Noah, Jesus, God, was inside the ark and told them to come into the ark. By the scene, church age, Jesus is standing outside the church, knocking on the church door while Satan is inside the front row and aiming the preacher, aiming the world of junk. <clears throat> I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me on my throne, even as I overcame. And sat down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear. What we read in Jeremiah. Let him hear. You know what the problem is been in Jeremiah? They've heard but they won't listen. That's what we've been doing to Jeremiah. Today's church has not walked in the past church history. Of the early church. Jeremiah 17.9. I almost forgot this one. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful, deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? All right? There's our heart. Remember, follow your heart. Do what your heart tells you to do. Memorize Jeremiah 17, 9. Heart, 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things including your mind. Don't let your heart guide you. Let the Bible, Jeremiah 18, 12. And they said, there is no hope, but we will walk after our own devices. We will everyone do imagination of his evil heart. Now look at, look at, <clears throat> all right. We're going, the, the, God's not going to ever forgive us. God's without forgiveness. We're wicked, we're by, look, look what he's saying. Look what he says. Verse 12. We will everyone do the imagination of his evil heart. They are admitting their heart is evil, but they're not repenting their heart is evil. Uh, just give up, tough up for lip. Oh, well. All Wednesday, all ends. God's not going to do anything for us. We're going to continue in our sin.
Here is the most unbearable moment when someone has decided to walk in the ways of evil and their imagination of their evil heart and will not listen to God. But we're going to listen to our evil heart. Our evil, wicked heart. You're either going to listen to God or you're going to listen to your evil, wicked heart. You're not going to do both. You can't do both. The Laodicean church age is trying to do it, and God says, you make me sick. And yet they're stating for, for a proven fact, their heart, their imagination of their heart is evil. But we're not going to listen to God. There's no hope listening to God. We're going to continue in our sins. Let's look at some wickedness of people who have followed their wicked, evil heart. Ted Bundy. Jeffy Dahmer. Charles Mason. The 918 Americans that died in People's Temple. Related incident. Related incident. Including the 909 members of the temple. Led by Jim Jones and Johnston from March 24th to the 27th of 1997. Not only did these people walk in the evil imaginations of their heart, they led others to walk in an evil imagination, wicked in their heart. The 39 followers of the Heaven Gate that died in a mass suicide on Rancho Santa Fe, California. These are people who took other people with them. And you better believe in your heart when you decide you're going to sin. You ain't going to sin all by yourself. You're going to take casualties with you. No sin is a private devotion of you and yourself alone. Others will suffer. Adolf Hitler. The concentration camps. The torture. The poisoning. The murder. The 9-11 Twin Towers of New York. The Branch Davidians. And on and on and on. We Listen, the Branch Davidians, the guy quoted from the King James Bible. There's no hope. That's done. We're still going to walk in the imagination of our evil heart. Shame, Zechariah 7. And I know a lot of people don't like this. I know ministers don't like my talk, but hey, you're not going to like it too well when God reproves you. You're not going to like it too well when you walk away from ashes. All right? You know down deep in your heart what you're doing is wrong. But you're going to say, and you are saying, I don't care what the Word of God says. We're going to do it because it's going to please everybody. And you sinned against God. Zechariah 7.10 And oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor, nor let none of you imagine evil, there's imagination again. Against your his brother, here would be a fellow Jew. But the application to the church age would be your brother or sister in the Lord. In your heart. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody. There rings a melody of evil. Oh, you don't sing it like that. But when you strip down and look at some Christians who are saved, that's that's the perfect hymn. There lies evil and wickedness and abandoned from the word of God. And they're not listening. Here's a scripture application to Jews versus other Jews. And it it can be applied to the brethren of the church. And it's saying against a brother, 
don't imagine with your heart evil. There are people and Christians that must know thinking can be as sinful as doing. Who sort of looketh upon a woman to lust after it in his heart? Has already committed adultery with her. You didn't sleep with her. You didn't go to bed with her. You didn't go to a hotel with her. You didn't get naked with her. You didn't have flesh joined with flesh with her. You thought about it with her. That's the danger of pornography. All you got to do is think about it and it becomes sin. When was the last time you repented of your sins of thinking about it? And when was the last time all the pulpits of the world, of the Laodicean church, when the preacher got up and said, it is a sin of all the thoughts you're thinking about that are against God, against the word. When was the last time you had a preacher tell you, your thoughts may be sin? Joab's brother did not kill, I forget what his name but he was thinking about it, and Joab and his brother Abishai were both charged with the murder. You need to get alone with God right now and realize, what, are you, what is your thought like? Have you sinned against God with your thoughts? And why hasn't your preacher preached about your thoughts? Uh-huh. Hating a brother is just as evil as doing something to him. Verb is an action where it's physical or mental. It's an action. You can verb a thought or you can verb an action. They're both doing something. It's called in part vengeance, retaliation, get over, get even. Turn against, remove, get rid of it. Don't even think about sinning or committing a sin. Because guess what? It's a sin. It's a sin to think about sin. Have you repented of your sin? Have you turned your ears away from God? And follow the imagination of your evil heart. And you've sinned. You have sinned against God. And if we confess our sins, He's faithful and, and faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now you may not like, well, you hit us hard. Good. Now repent. Now repent. 